God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for your sins and he sent him to take stripes upon his back so that you could be healed and whole. You know, just as much as God doesn't want anyone to perish, he doesn't want anyone to be sick or diseased. But I'll tell you what, Satan has a plan for humans. His plan is sickness, dis disease, death, and destruction. And so we're so thrilled that we can bring the word of God into your life and let you know the good news that God wants you well. Amen. We have a live audience today, so if you hear people amening, they're just cheering on the word of God today and helping you to receive your healing. You know, we've seen in past episodes that faith believes we have our answers from God now, not in the future. We saw that hope is a good waiter, but it's a poor receiver. And so it takes faith to receive. Faith does not hope we'll see the answer. Faith believes that we receive the answer now. So we could say this, the eyes of faith see the answer as having already happened. Do you know you have spiritual eyes? We have physical eyes and physical ears, but we have spiritual eyes and spiritual ears as well. And our spiritual eyes can see things in the realm of the spirit. And what they'll see is what God says, what God's word promises. How is this possible? By placing our attention on the right things. Now I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22 to show you this is so. The Lord said, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Not just some, but all their flesh. So notice this passage says to not let God's word depart from before our eyes. You know, many people fail in life. They fail to receive healing, for instance, because they see themselves as failing. Instead of seeing themselves as getting better or as healed, they see themselves as dying. You know, I know that's an extreme situation, but we minister to people on a weekly basis who have been given terrible prognosis. And these people oftentimes do not see themselves as having any hope to live. So what we do is we go in and we begin to tell them what God says about it. And you can see them go from hopelessness to beginning to have hope. You know, if you're just seeing yourself as dying and you see it as over with, you're not seeing the answer. You're not seeing yourself the way God sees you. Now, God's word says this in Matthew 8, 17. It says, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So if that word does not depart from before your eyes, you're bound to see yourself as healed and well. Because if you're looking at what the word says, and we believe God cannot lie, and he's saying Jesus already took your sicknesses and diseases, and not we're not talking about a hangnail. We're not talking just about a headache, even though these are things people shouldn't have to live with. We're talking about a serious illness or disease as well. We're talking about a doctor's diagnosis that says you have two weeks to live. Well, when you hear that, your mind immediately goes into imagining that that's happening. But what we have to do is take God's word and we have to begin to see what God says about it. And as we're looking at what he says and we're keeping his word before our eyes, we're bound to see ourselves well. We're bound to see ourselves living our full life out. You know, if you don't see yourself without sickness, then that just means this. Either you never saw the word of God and what it had to say, or you've stopped looking at what the word is saying. You know, I like to say this. Uh, many people try to say I'm a great multitasker. Well, the truth is, medically speaking, nobody can think two thoughts at the same time. You know, what we're really saying when we say I'm a multitasker is that I can bounce back and forth quickly between two different things. But you're not just focusing on two things at once. It's one or the other. So what happens is if we stop seeing ourselves as getting better, if we stop seeing ourselves as healed, we've started looking at the wrong thing again. We're starting to look at something different than what the word says because it's impossible to be looking at what the word says and think you're not going to make it. Now notice verse 22 from Proverbs 4 again. It says, my words are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. 
Now, in the Hebrew, that word health actually could be translated medicine. So God's words are medicine to all of our flesh, but it has to be taken according to directions. You know, we've discussed this in past episodes. If a doctor gives you a prescription to take a certain pill, he is going to give you instructions on how to take it. And if you don't follow those, those instructions and then it doesn't work, you really can't go back and blame the doctor for that. That The problem is you didn't follow the instructions. Well, when it comes to taking God's medicine, many people don't follow the instructions. Therefore, they don't receive the benefit of it. But one of those instructions or directions is let God's words not depart from before your eyes. That means keep looking at what the word says. Keep seeing yourself with what the word says. I heard a story of a lady who was healed of terminal cancer, and this is many decades ago now, and she's still alive. But she was given two weeks to live. And so one of the things she did, besides meditating on what God says about healing every day, she started putting pictures of herself all over the house from when she was vibrant and healthy and strong. Why? Because she is keeping before her eyes the picture of what she believes she has. You know, sometimes we have to do things to help our faith and help our vision for life. That could work in any arena, but we're primarily talking about healing today. You know, too many people pray and pray, but they never see themselves as getting better. Therefore, they don't get better. As long as you're praying, but also seeing yourself as getting worse, you're canceling out the effects of your prayers. That may be an answer for somebody watching today. If you keep looking at the symptoms, you keep uh, hyper-analyzing how you feel. You know, it's amazing to me. I've been in the ministry for almost 40 years. Well, a little over 40 actually now. And I have seen two types of people. There are those that completely ignore their symptoms and they're totally untroubled by them. That almost is the place of denial, which is not a good place. And then there are those that every little quirk or feeling they have, they hyper-focus on it and they blow it out of proportion. <laughs> you know, we've got to be neither. We need to be hyper-focused on what the Word says, but just because you get a quirk or a pain or a symptom doesn't mean you're dying. The devil's just trying to convince you of such silly things. So if you're going to keep looking at your symptoms, keep looking at the doctor's report, you will keep walking in unbelief. You will keep walking in doubt, and you will destroy the effects of your praying. Let's get our minds on the answers. Amen. See yourselves as having received your healing already. If you've been to a healing line, if someone's laid hands on you, that was your point of contact. All you have to do is say from that day forward, I believe I received my healing. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, I believe what the word says. The word says believers shall be followed by these signs. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Therefore, I am recovering. It's not based on how you feel. It's based on what God's word says. And that's when you'll get results. You know, faith will always contradict negative circumstances. As a matter of fact, your friends and family and associates, if, if they start hearing you talk faith talk, they might think you've lost your mind. But really, when you start talking faith talk, that's when you found your sound mind. You found the mind of Christ. And it's so different from the way the world operates that it's hard for some people to get a hold of this concept. But, for example, Hebrews 13. Let me give you an example of contradicting negative circumstances. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6 says, For he himself has said... I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, so that we may boldly say, I love this example. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So uh, are we boldly saying the Lord is my helper? Because um, that's what we should be saying according to the scripture. But so many people are saying, well, I don't know if I can make it or not. Well, that contradicts what we just read. They're boldly saying, I'm defeated, I'm bound, I'm sick, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. They can boldly say those things, but they're not boldly saying, the Lord is my helper, the Lord is my healer, and I will make it. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. By his stripes, I am healed. And so if the Lord says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, we can believe that, and that's what gives us boldness to repeat that and say that. If the Lord says himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses and pains, then you can boldly say what God says. 
because he's not a man that he should lie. So what am I saying here? I'm boldly saying what God says so that I can continue to see the answer, so that I can continue to see myself well. You know, wrong thinking, wrong believing, and then ultimately wrong talking is what defeats you. Some people think, oh, the devil's defeated me. No, because Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus defeated the devil for you. The devil's incapable of defeating you. But let me tell you what he's capable of. He's capable of talking to you. He's capable of telling you deceptive words that contradict what God says. And if you're going to go ahead and believe what the devil says instead of what God says, you're going to defeat yourself. The devil doesn't have to do it. All he has to do is interject a line of thinking. And if you take his words and you start seeing yourself with what the devil says, then you're going to put yourself in a state of failure. And so I want to encourage you, don't listen to Satan. Listen to what God says because he'll never lie to you. And God's looking out for your best interest. He wants you healed. You know, faith always says the answer, not the problem. So real faith in God's word says that if God says it's so, it's so. If God says by his stripes you were healed, then you are healed. We have what the word says we have. We are who the word says we are. And we can do what the word says we can do. And we have to always remember that God does not give us something to do that's beyond us. Everything he's given to us to do and to say and to believe is within the realm of possibility for us. Otherwise, he'd be unjust. So faith is simply agreeing with God. Now, here's another great scripture in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Some translations say profession. But that word confession in the Greek, it means this, to hold fast to saying the same things. That means we don't say one day, yes, I believe I'm healed. And then an hour later, I don't know if I'm going to make it. That's not holding fast to saying the same thing as God's saying. No, we've got to hold fast to that because Jesus is saying, look, I died for you. I paid the price for you. I've given you health and healing. I've given you all the help you need. Now we have to agree with him. If we don't agree with him, we can't enjoy his benefits. But part of agreeing with him is seeing it. You know, the more you hear these words, the more you think about them, the more you put yourself into that word and put that word into you, you will see yourself healed. And that's so important. You know, we're not talking about uh, Eastern religions here. You know, there are other religions that have learned how to imagine and meditate situations. But really, they just rob these principles from our God. God has given us an imagination so that we can see ourselves with what the Word says. And so I want to encourage you, start seeing yourself healed. Start seeing yourself well. If you can't run and play like you used to, you know, maybe play with your children or your grandchildren, start seeing yourself doing those things again. If you've been limping and can't get around well, start seeing yourself walking normally. If the doctors have said you're not going to live long, start seeing yourself living your full life out. What would you do 10 years from now if you were going to live 10 more years? That's what you have to get your focus on. That's what you have to put your attention on because faith always sees the answer. Faith sees healing. Amen. Well, I hope you were blessed by today's episode. And I would like to encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you were. Until next time, I want to remind you that God has a purpose for your life and it's so much greater than you know. God bless you.